What's going on, people? Ram Dean and Black with you here in our downtown studios. The UFC on Fox goes down from Denver, Colorado this Saturday night. Former UFC heavyweight champion Andre Orlovsky takes on the menacing Francis Ngannou. And I will tell you, uh, to be honest, uh, when, we, when they first signed this fight, I thought this was going to be a cakewalk for Andre Orlovsky. He has seen everything in the game. Ngannou, our guy uh, Paul Shaughnessy, has been bigging this guy up. What could he do against the former UFC heavyweight champion that I said has seen it all, has been around the block. But now, based on the things I'm seeing in mixed martial arts, and I think that the, maybe the, the turning of the page for me is what happened to the former 155-pound, uh, 170-pound champion BJ Penn and what, how Yara Rodriguez just smoked that guy. Do you think that Ngano has those abilities, or is he just too uh, not advanced enough for this stage of his, his life and career? Mm, it's a, that's a good question. You know, we've been using this term uh, that we've been comparing the art and skill of fighting to, and its change, to technological sea changes. We've been talking about that here at this desk for a year and a half. Conor McGregor was a change of technology. The way that Holly Holm beat Ronda was a technology change and shift. Then everybody's now able to do that. Everybody plants their foot while backing up. Everybody. Uh, creates a trap for you in your own aggression. It was a response to the pressure fighter being so dominant. This was an inevitable response of the coaching staff all over the world and the fighters all over the world. Uh, now, the new guys, and Gano's 30, I believe, and the new guys coming up, it's not about age, it's about what they've been exposed to through this path from 1-0 and o and o to 2-0 and o all the way up. And he looks like one of these guys, but he also looks not quite as seasoned. So we're not sure, but these guys also, on the other hand, get better so rapidly. So it is, it is a fascinating, fascinating time in fighting right now. It's as if you're sitting there and you're watching, you know, like really low, a regular, tele, a regular phone become an iPhone 6, but happen in two and a half years. And so week to week, different teams and different fighters make that shift. Oh, you're an iPhone 3. Oh, I'm still a flip phone, you know? And that's what's happening right now. And it is fascinating. Is Engano good enough to deal with that seasoning? Is this new technology and this new understanding and manipulation of space good enough to be better than that amount of seasoning and familiarity with combat? I don't know the answer to that. My guess before that last fight would have been no. But that last fight swayed me and I would not, man, it's be, uh, we've always said don't bet on fighting. Now I have no idea how anybody <laughs> yeah, has the nuts to do it. Uh, one of the things we know is uh, there are so many great minds in mixed martial arts when it comes to coaching and training. And Andre Orlovsky has the luxury of working with one of the greatest minds maybe ever in mixed martial arts in Greg Jackson. Uh, the guy has a, has a complete understanding of what he needs to do to ensure a fighter's success. We know he has cutting edge tools and technology. Can he give that to all of his athletes? It's, it's really tricky. If it can be done, it is guys like Greg Jackson who have been understanding this change and, and on the front end of it, and in some cases causing it. It's these guys who understand how the change happens. But can, I mean, BJ Penn, I'm telling you, if you will look at the first two minutes of that fight, he knew exactly what he had to do against Yair Rodriguez. Greg had him ready. Greg made him understand, this is what we need to do. He was programmed, I bet you in training he looked amazing. I bet you against you know, uh, Bruce Leroy, who uh, fought to a very close decision with Yair Rodriguez and has some, I bet you BJ looked amazing against him. They said he did. But in the moments of the fight, the dog becomes the dog, and BJ became the old dog. And Andre, at some point, will go back to yeah, that double right. right hand. He'll go back to tucking his chin and throwing that thing. And if you do that against a freewheeling, smooth, still clunky in some ways, but freewheeling and smooth in Gano, I don't know what happens. Uh, Andre Olofsky still has a lot of fights ahead of him, but we're almost getting to a point now where we can, you know, uh, Hector and, and Johnny Hendricks, that fight makes sense. Yeah. Hector or Johnny Hendricks against one of these young guys making no sense, right. you know? But for Andre Orlovsky, one of the things that I think people criticize is that we know he has skills everywhere. We know that he can wrestle. We know that he can submit you, but he continues to go into the fire. And that's a lot of the time, mm -hmm. that's how his losses occur. He normally gets mm -hmm. knocked out because at the heavyweight limit, you land a perfect punch. When you, you don't even have to land a perfect punch. You just swing that big uh, hammer out there and I, people are falling down. And Andre Orlovsky likes to get into these type of fights. 
is it important that he changes the strategy and go back to some of the things that he knows he has tucked in his back pocket? You know, when it's Stipe fought him, that's going on probably over a year ago now, and Stipe was evolved so much past him. I've been, we've been fans of Stipe yeah, Miocic of for a long time because we spotted the the changes, the the evolution that he I was, was unsure. Making. I yeah. was unsure to be honest because you know Stipe was still new to the game, and we had to see him face some of the guys that have been around. And then also with the Stefan Struve loss, I just wasn't sure. Yeah. I think it, I've got a breakdown of Stipe going into Verdum where I look at that Arlovsky fight and how different he was from Arlovsky. And I think I looked at it again when Stipe was going in against Overeem. Uh, if Ngannou is taking that path, has Arlovsky made the adjustments? I mean, all these guys now understand the guy in the gym, the young heavyweight in there, is closer to Miocic than he is to the old Arlovsky. So Arlovsky's had to change. They've had to evolve. Day by day, it's innovate or die. That's what's happening in fighting right now, coaching fighters, everyone. And it's really exciting. Uh, but I don't know. I, I really don't know. I'd love to see Arlovsky just go out there and show that toughness and the heaviest right hand in the game can, can do it. And he might do it. But would you be surprised to see him look completely out of his element there against a young guy who's already made improvements since the last fight? Will we see some new tricks from the former UFC heavyweight champion Andre Orlovsky? All the UFC action goes down on Fox this Saturday night in Denver, Colorado.